We know Secure Shell, we can issue commands on other computers, and those commands are sent via a secure connection. The concept is we have a client application, my Secure Shell client, Secure Shell server, and they send data and it's encrypted. Well, this is in the unsecure TCP connection. When we use Secure Shell, it's encrypted. Now, one benefit of Secure Shell is we don't have to send commands to, to simply uh, look on a computer like LS. We can send uh, other things as data and it still be encrypted. And Secure Shell can be used for tunneling, the concept of sending data to servers uh, to be forwarded on to another location. There are different ways to do this, but it's probably best illustrated by a quick, ex a quick example. Let me access a website and show you what is my IP address. I'm going to visit a website called whatismyipaddress.com and this is a website which quite simply when you send a message to the website, the website receives a packet, the source IP address identifies me. So then it prints the source IP address on the screen. Open your phone and access that same website now. What is my IP address.com? Check your IP address. What do you get, anyone? Same? Some people getting the same IP address, 203.131.209.66, maybe slightly different. Anyone get a different one? This is an easy task. Visit a website, same one, okay? So you can use other websites to show what is your IP address. This is an easy one. But you're all experts on the internet, and everything I taught you last semester was saying that computers have different IP addresses. Two computers should have two different IP addresses. Why, when all of us accessing this website, this website says we all have the same IP address? Why is that? If I check my computer and your computer and look at the IP addresses on the settings, I think it will not be the same. In fact, mine is not this. Mine is something like 10103.50 or something on my computer. The way that the internet commonly works and that networks are set up is that everyone inside an organization, everyone inside SIT has a unique IP address. But whenever you contact someone outside of SIT, there's a special server in SIT that changes your internal IP address to an external public IP address. And the public IP address everyone gets is this one. So from the outside world's perspective, it recognises all of us as the same computer. But we know they're different. What's the name of this thing that converts from our internal IP address to a public IP address? Started with Dr. Comwood, I think, this semester. Maybe. Maybe you study it this week. Network address translation. If you see in sometimes your setup of your home router or, or you want to set up special network services, NAT or NAT. This is translating internal addresses to a public IP address. There are reasons for doing it, mainly saving on IP addresses. There are not so many to go around, so we share some. That's not the point here. The point is that the server can identify me. Well, not exactly my computer, but it does identify that I'm within Tamasat University. Let's change some settings. What I'm going to do is use Secure Shell to contact a server.
And I'll use a special option, which I'll explain in a moment. Why won't my computer connect? Because everyone else is connected to Wi-Fi. I've lost my connection. It's coming back. We'll come back and explain the purpose of this command in a moment. I'm going to go into my browser settings and edit some preferences and some advanced preferences and set up the network and use a proxy. What I'm going to do with my browser is say, when I send something out to the internet, don't send it as is, send it to someone else. Send it to a proxy who will forward it on my behalf. And the proxy in this case is myself. So manual proxy configuration, and I'm going to use something called SOX. It's a special protocol, and it says, when my browser wants to send something, send it to what's called localhost. Localhost is my computer. So don't send it out, send it to myself. In particular, send it to myself and an application on my computer listening using port 9999. And I just chose that number for the example. So send it to this other application using port 9999. And now I access the same website. And now I am in Singapore. And my IP address, well, it's actually an IPv6 address, but it's not the same as Tamasat. It's, uh, we use IPv6 in some networks. Uh, this website, the same one as I accessed before, thinks I am in Singapore now. What happened was that the proxy, when I set it up, I said, send all my web requests to some software on my computer and that software is using port 9999 and it can be a different number, it doesn't matter. What is that software? I set up a secure shell connection to my server, sandylands.info. Where is it, that server? Turns out it's in Singapore. All right, so just a rented server in Singapore. And this minus D option 9999 means set up the secure shell connection. Whenever someone sends something to you on port 9999, send it to Singapore. Send it to sandylands.info. And then that server will send it to the real destination website, whatismyipaddress.com. So this is a secure shell tunnel. And you see one application of it is to forwarding your traffic via someone else. What happened? In that example was we had Firefox, my browser, was set up to send something and it sent it to the secure shell software on my the secure shell client. And in this particular case, the port number Firefox sent it to the secure shell software, the client, listening on port 9999 and then secure shell sent it out of my computer across the internet. This is the secure shell client to a secure shell server. This is the internet here. And this secure shell server receives it. This is my laptop. At SIIT. This computer was my secure shell server. In Singapore. What port number does a secure shell server use? For those who have done the computer networking lab, what is it? 22. That's the default port number. So my secure shell client sent that 
data to the secure shell server and it was set up so that then it sent it out. across the internet. And received by the web server. Whatever. using the normal port for web browsing. Importantly, all the communications across this segment are encrypted. We were using Secure Shell. So this is one example of using Secure Shell tunneling. From my web browser, I want to access a website, but instead of, instead of sending it direct, I send it via some intermediate proxy in this case. And the proxy was established using a secure shell connection. So I send it to some local secure shell client on my computer, which then sends it securely across the internet, encrypted, to some intermediate computer, this proxy. And then that forwards the normal data, unencrypted, onto the destination website, the one that I wanted to visit in my browser. So the communication protocols, for example, this was HTTP. This was using Secure Shell. And here to c talk between the Firefox application and the Secure Shell application on my computer, the protocol is called SOX local communications inside my computer. What's the advantage of doing this? What did I gain from doing this? Protect the data from where? Well, I've protected the data at least across this segment of the internet, from my computer to the proxy computer. That is, it's encrypted. No one can see that. Who did I protect against? Who do I hide my data from in that case then? SIT. That is, if someone was out here on the internet between the web server and my proxy, they can see my data. Nothing is protected here. So we don't gain end-to-end -end encryption, but we do have encryption across one segment. So if we want to bypass or have some protection against someone, say, your local organization, then this is what it does. It encrypts the data going out so that, say, SIT cannot see my data. What else can't SIT see? Do they know who I'm communicating with? No, no they think I'm communicating with sandylands.info. Right. When SIT intercepts these messages, they see the destination address is that of the proxy, not of the final website. Okay? So we're not just hiding our data, we're hiding who we're accessing. And this is one simple example of providing privacy in the internet, hiding the, the, the behavior of your communications. What's the problem with this approach for privacy? Someone can still see the data, but to the end server, yes. Another problem with this approach is that you need a server set up to, to listen on the secure shell connection, which I did. So there are other techniques which don't involve you setting up a server in advance. Uh, some techniques that do include generally virtual private networks, VPNs, do a similar thing, but using different protocols, not secure shell. And others, another one is Tor. Onion routing, TOR, provides similar servers, but in a more secure manner for private communications in the internet. That's covered in my topic, which we're going through in IT security. So you'll miss that if you want to join our lectures on tomorrow morning or Wednesday afternoon, you'll see TOR and VPNs covered. But that's just an introduction to it for today. <laughs>